So I will start my presentation with the, with the number. So there is over 6,000 fossil pollen dates currently in Neotoma. And then if you want to go, we've seen today quite some examples how to, you know, get a single data set and then work with it. But if you want to do multi-record or multi-sequence analysis for some macroecological studies, there are certain things you need to think about and certain things to consider if you want to do this. So my name is Andre Mottl. I'm a postdoc at the University of Bergen. And through the presentation, there will be sometimes popping up this QR code. So we are feel free to print screen and then follow this. This one will take you, for example, to my Twitter account. So if you are processing, if you are building a political data set compilation, meaning if you're taking multiple records for your analysis for your project, there are certain things you need to consider, right? One of them could be various data sources, mostly the biggest uh, the, the most common source is, of course, Neotoma, but there are some other sources. There's Pangea, there's some private data you can have. And differences between these sources you need to consider, right? There's also depositional environments, which you may look into. There's a big difference if you are using, let's say, fossil pollen records from, from marine sources or from lakes. There's chronologies, differences between different methods for different records, difference in the, in the, in the selection of the, uh, chronology control points to build these chronologies. Of course, taxonomic harmonization, meaning if you have, if different paleontologists identify the pollen taxa, they can be identified to different level, right? How, based on the scale and the reference collection, other things. And at the end, there could be some criteria for your data quality to consider including different records into your compilation. So luckily for you, we there is a now tool to which will help you guide you through this process, which is called FOSIPOL, and it's a very close to process global macroecological uh, paleoecological pollen data, basically. So in short, what it is, it is it is it is used to take a data and put it make it into compilation. Right? It's it's mostly built 100% built in our environment, and it's very project specific. Meaning, if you as a data user want to make a new project with a data compilation, you will specifically select what's your scope, do you want a global or regional, what's your time period you're interested, and what would your criteria for your data quality you want to set up to do this. So what will you, I will start with the end, what you will end up with if you use this tool, you will end up with data assembly, which is an RDS, which is a format for storing the data in R, you will have some metadata information, meaning your location, geographic location of your data set, the DOI, the deposition environments, length, uh, meaning time, uh, age period, etc. You, you will also end up with what we call data auto reference, which is something we're very happy about. For your compilation specifically, you, you, it, you will be given a, a reference table for with all the authors of the data sets present in your compilation, and it's up to you. You can then go ahead and, and contact them or invite them to be co in your study or etc. cetera. Uh, there will be also graphical summary output. And of course, pollen diagrams plotted for each of your uh, record present in your compilation, etc. So I will now go through each of these steps, what is actually happening, and then show you that in the detail. So the, the workflow will go in this way. It will be Neotoma, which will download the data, right? Even though I put it as a mess, we know there is some, there's quite quality checks from the curators uh, 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 from the Neotoma, which they have their amazing job. But if you're using data from different time periods or from different curators, there may be differences between them. So there is a need to do some kind of process, initial data processing, which we call it. Then there is recalibration of HDF bottles to make sure that all records in your compilation use the, the newest calibration curves and the, the, the same methodology. Then there is taxonomic harmonization and then main data filtering, meaning setting the criteria for your specific assembly. So I will go through each of these steps now very shortly. I don't have too much time and with some example, right? So download data. I, I went ahead and create an example where I select Scandinavia. And here in blue, you can see the bound box, which I set for geographical criteria and uh, the, the workflow automatically connect to Neotoma API and download this 200 and almost 300 records from Neotoma for fossil pollen. Then I will do some initial processing where the workflow will guide the user through initial steps. So for example, deposition environments, it will automatically out detect and output all deposition environments present in my compilation. And I, as a user, need to select which one do I want to keep and which one I want to filter out. 
There will be also chat for presence of chronological control table, uh, selection of which ecological groups do want to be included, which I saw was also a little bit discussed already in the Slack channel. And for example, number of levels, so number of samples each record has to have to be included. So I applied some criteria and we will end up with 190 records at this stage. Next stage is going to be chronology. So again, there's importance to check the chronology control table, which is the table which is used to create a chronology for each record will be will be checked and you can select which chronology control types are allowed to allow only radiocarbon dates to be or do you involve other like biostratigraphical errors etc cetera, etc cetera. how many dates needs to be for e in each table to be in order to be valid chronology control table the workflow will also automatically assign the newest calibration curve based on chronology and use the post bomb calibration curve for uh, points if needed and much more and then all uh, records in the in the compilation will be automatically rerun with the probabilistic Bayesian chronology model and this is for my example for the Scandinavia I end up for my selection my criteria if I selected them I end up with 160 data points the next important step is the normalization and the workflow will automatically detect all taxa present in your state of your compilation and create a full table with it. And then it is up to you to do it yourself or work with expert palynologists to harmonize them to same or higher taxonomic level. Here we can see an example of Bignonia, where different authors of the data name them differently. But for our purposes, we will all clump them together in the same name as Bignonia type. And finally, there is data filtering which is optional. There are certain ways you want to set up your criteria for the quality of the data. All of them are optional and it's up to you. How do you want to set up? And it's up to your research questions and specific project. So one of the criteria could be total pollen grain somewhere in each level. It can be age limitation, meaning how long the sequence needs to be, which time period spanning, then age extrapolation, meaning how far I'm willing to extrapolate time from the last chronology control points. Interest of period, meaning just cutting the and uh, outside of the, the data outside of the period of interest. And of course, after all this filtering, you can again check your each record if they have enough number of levels for a compilation. So in this example, based on the criteria I set up, we will end up with over 100 records. And as you realized, we, we went from 300 to 100 only, which you may say we are losing quite a lot of data. But I think the argument is that we are drastically increasing the quality of the data for the specific research question we want to do with this data, right? And in this case, it could be, for example, diversity pattern uh, for the last 8,000 years in Scandinavia. So this is an example of the graphical summary I was talking about, which is automatically outputted by the, the workflow. Here through the workflow, you can provide some, whatever shape file you want to classify your grouping of your data. I choose to provide WWF biome, and the automatic graphical output will have the uh, spatial distribution of the data. It will have some kind of number of records present in the compilation and then also uh, uh, temporal distribution of my records. And you can see they're all cut at 8,000 years because this is a time focus time period which I selected for the data. So what is possible is a workflow which should help the user guide you through all these bits and pieces which are needed to consider if you're building this multi-record polyecological data set. So it handles all the steps and flags the places where user needs to specify the choices, which are again, project specific. I think this makes it very easy to use because it's constantly communicating with the user and he, he or she needs to make the choices. It's project specific, as I thought, and it can work at macroecological scales, right? So it can be, it's, it's an access for macroecologists to use the vegetation history data. Uh, and then currently we have a paper which had just has been accepted in GAP, which is a guide to process and standardize these uh, fossil pollen records. And of course, we're also launching a website which is all the documentation and all the step-by-step -step, uh, and all the information should be there. We're also creating channels for people to communicate with us if they have issues, et cetera, et cetera. So this uh, is everything for me. Again, there is a link if you wanna follow and be updated on this uh, project, follow my Twitter, or there is a link to the uh, our HOPE project in general, which I'm part of. Thank you very much.